Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Jade. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very much for being a part of our family, for being a part of this little itty bitty tiny reading that we do every single day, and we hope that you guys are in the Torah. We hope that you guys are in covenant with our Creator. And what does that mean, Jade, being in Torah and being in covenant? It means following the law, statutes, commands. It means obeying what we have been told in the first five books of the Bible. It means being in the covenant that uh, Yahuwah made with his people, the people of Israel. If you want to be part of the Hebrew, if you want to be part of the Hebrew nation, Yahuwah's children, Yahuwah's chosen nation, then you obey his law, statutes, and commandments, and you join in the covenant that he made with his people. That if we obey his covenant and we obey his Torah, that he will be our Elohim and he will protect us. And are his commandments, Eli, too hard to carry? No, not at all. There are not any commands that are too hard. Don't eat the blood. Don't to eat pork. Didn't honor the Shabbat. Nothing is too hard to keep. Don't beat up. Don't beat up old people. Um, is is one thing, right? Wow! Wow! There they go. And so, um, that's the dogs. Just they just all ran away. Okay, so we don't beat up the old people because we don't harm the disabled. We don't do anything like that. Um, let's just. I'm just listening to make sure there's no breakouts outside. All right, so here we are, everybody. The dogs are all gone. Eli's gone. Mr. Cole's gone. They are chasing the dogs, guys. This is the greatest translation, English translations that I believe is has ever been produced. Um, it's 14.5 font. It's a little over three inches on the spine. This is a very large book. It's 3,153 pages, has 103 books that you will not find anywhere else. There has never been a book in the biblical world this big and with so many books, <clears throat> so many, everything with this restored, you will not have another opportunity for this. And so this is the, it's $70 and for every purchase that we get, we are hoping and trying to get one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains. And so this is what this entire ministry is about, is about helping our brothers and sisters in change, helping them find a better way forward. The dogs are all popping in here, so they're probably going to make some noises as they're coming in here. And guys, the, the brothers and sisters in chains is the greatest ministry that anybody can help support because our brothers and sisters in chains are the people who will hopefully be the most receptive to all of these words because of their predicament, where they are at, where they are stuck. And when people have their freedoms taken, they become different. Some get hard, some people get soft. But the best way that we can ever get to these guys is by getting in the word of our creator and praying that Yah will help them to open this book and to read this manuscript. Guys, these uh, downloads are absolutely free. We Everything we have is completely free. The word of Yah is to be told, it's not to be sold. And this is why we gave out everything that we had absolutely free of charge always. And so you guys, there's over 13 um, downloads a, a day. And I, you know, when you look at a consistent download, that I believe is what you would call success. Getting 13 scriptures into everybody's hands every single day, day after day. And so hopefully, you know, one or two of these people that download this will actually read this. Maybe all of them. I, I would hope all of them would. Um, but a lot of people just take it and they'll put it in a collector's uh been on their computer, which is, this is a collector's book. This PDF is, uh, there's, it's not available anywhere else. There's nobody that's ever done a PDF like this and given this stuff away. So the word of our creator is in front of us at all times. Guys, also, we're very, very excited. Today, we will be releasing a brand new book. It's called Traditions of Men. It has been a complete rewrite of the horrific book, um, Vain Traditions, which was put out by the Hallelujah Scriptures, and inside the Vain Traditions, they completely corrupted that entire book. So Miss Nicole has been working for about the last four or five months, recreating this, getting all the images, finding out all these uh, messed up things in this book, and this book called Traditions of Men, it will be a very, very good book. It is a something that we hope everybody reads. We will have a free PDF for that as well, that will be available today, um, hopefully, once we get the dog baths done, but it will be available right here. It will be available at Yah Scriptures with the rest of the Amazon books. You'll be able to get it on Amazon. There's a couple different places to do it. The The book on Amazon is full color, which I don't think you can get a book that's actually full color. Um, and so you, this is a, a very, very good book for anybody's library, for anybody trying to break the chains of Christianity and these other religions that uh, just plague us day in and day out. Okay, um, Jade. 
what you got for us? What has happened to this point? Give us a uh, recap, please. So, uh, David sinned. He took another man's wife. The uh, wife he took, she uh, lost her child. They lost their child. Uh, David was forgiven by Yahoo after the child died. Um, Yoab went and waged, waged war on cities. He told David to come and take the city in his name because it's not a legal name after Yoab. Um, then Absalom went and, um, defiled his sister. David heard about, or not Absalom, but Ammon. He went and heard about it. It was Absalom's sister and Ammon's sister. And Absalom found out about it. David found out about it. David didn't do anything. He said he was wroth. He just sat there being angry. Absalom went and killed him two years after that. And he and his brothers went and he set up a trap for him. They went and killed him while he was drunk. And then Absalom has fled to another city. Yeah, and, you know, King David didn't just, he, it wasn't one sin. King David broke many, many Torah commands during this whole um, adulterous uh, expedition that he went on. Okay, Eli, you have anything else to throw in with this? No, I don't think so. Okay, are we ready? Yep. All right. And Yoab, son of Zuriah, knew that the heart of the sovereign was towards Absalom. And Yoab sent to Tekoa and brought from there a wise woman and said to her, Please pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning garments and do not anoint yourself with oil, but act like a woman who has been mourning a long time for the dead. Okay, why don't you think he wanted her to um, put on uh, and do not anoint yourself with oil? Why wouldn't uh, why wouldn't he have her do that? Uh, he's trying to have a plan here. He needs her to pretend to be someone she's not. So he needs her because people that are mourning for the dead, they don't like knowing themselves. They don't clean themselves up. They just like they mourn. So you can tell that something's wrong with them. Mm, I see. Yeah, I guess that's not something for the dead. Three. Then you shall go to the sovereign and speak to him according to this word. And Yoab put the words in her mouth. And the woman of Tekoa spoke to the sovereign. She fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, Save, O sovereign. And the sovereign said to her, What is your trouble? And she answered, Truly I am a widow, and my husband is dead. And your female servant had two sons, and two fought with each other in the field, and there was no one to part them, but the one smote the other and killed him. And see, the entire clan has risen up against your female servant and said, Give him who smote his brother, so that we put him to death for the life of his brother whom he killed, and destroy the heir also. Thus, they would extinguish my burning coal that is left and leave my husband neither name nor remnant on the earth. And the sovereign said to the woman, go to your house and let me give orders concerning you. And the woman of Tekoa said to the sovereign, my master, O sovereign, let the wickedness be on me and my father's house and the sovereign and his throne be guiltless. And the sovereign said, whoever speaks to you, bring him to me and let him no longer touch you. And she said, please let the sovereign remember Yahuwah your Elohim. And the Redeemer of blood, not destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As Yahuwah lives, not one hair on your son shall fall to the ground. And the woman said, Please let your female servant speak a word to my master, the sovereign. And he said, Speak. And the woman said, And why have you reasoned like this against the people of Elohim? For in speaking this word, the sovereign is as one who is guilty, in that the sovereign does not bring his outcast one home again. For we shall certainly die and become like water spilled on the ground, which is not gathered up again. Yet Elohim does not take away a life, but shall devise ways so that his outcast ones are not cast out from him. And now I have come to speak this word to my master, the sovereign, because the people have made me afraid. And your female servant said, please let me speak to the sovereign. It could be that the sovereign does what his female servant asks. For the sovereign has listened to deliver his female servant from the hand of the man seeking to destroy me and my son together from the inheritance of Elohim. Then your female servant said, Please, let the word of my master the sovereign be comforting, for my master the sovereign is as the messenger of Elohim, in discerning the good and the evil, and Yahuwah your Elohim is with you. And the sovereign answered and said to the woman, Please do not hide from me the matter that I am asking you. And the woman said, Please, let the master the sovereign speak. And the sovereign said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman answered and said, as your being lives, my master the sovereign, there is none to the right or to the left from all that my master the sovereign has spoken. For your servant Joab commanded me, and he put all these words in the mouth of your female servant. Your servant Joab has done this to change the appearance of the matter. But my master is wise, according to the wisdom of a messenger of Elohim, to know all that is in the earth. And the sovereign said to Joab, See now, you shall do this matter, and go, bring back the woman, the young man, Absalom. Now, Let's so, talk about this. So I think Joab really likes Absalom. I think he sees Absalom as a good person. So um, or King David. as Because the, the beginning of this chapter said that he 
he liked Absalom, right? He knew that the, the that Absalom was was good in his eyes and things, right? right? And so he, he saw what he did was uh, maybe like righteousness in his eyes. So is this um, what kind of deception is this? Did Yoab break Torah by by hiring this woman to lie and to bring this account? I mean, or, or what, I are, what are we what are we seeing? It's more here? kind of like a parable type thing, but. She, why did Yoab do this? Why, what's the whole point of this? Uh, to bring Absalom back. Yeah, to get King David back with Absalom. And so um, when we lie, are we breaking Torah? Did, did Torah breaking happen for this to begin? <clears throat> had had King Dawid not figured this out? Yeah, I mean, see, here's the thing. He can figure this out, but he can't figure out that Absalom wants to kill his brother. Um, I, you know, and that's the thing. He, David probably knew a lot about this. I mean, because... Um, who Absalom was? Um, what's his sister's name? Uh, Tamar. Tamar. That was his full sister, right? right. From the same mother. Whereas um, the other like fella, Amnon, yeah, is a half brother, and so that is um, why he is so hot to trot it for his sister because that's his full blooded sister. Um, anyone help? Anything else? Eli, you're bringing way too many points and things to this. I'm gonna have to have you shut down again because I don't think we have enough time for all of your speak. Can you simmer it down just a bit, please? I'll simmer it down. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Another okay. thing is, uh, Yoab here, this is like, Yoab knows how Dawid works, so he's been there so long, he knows how to get uh, Absalom back with Dawid, making make, make Dawid do the work. Yeah, it also seems that um, Dawid's smart enough to figure this out, and that uh, that Yoab had had enough conversations with him. To fig- the, to the old lady, happens. yeah, the old he's heard the same thing from Yoab, and then all of a sudden the old lady came in and did this thing, and then he's like... Um, He's like, woman, speak to me the truth. I need to know. Is this a, a ruse by my uh, homeboy, Yoab? Yeah, he, Yoab. Um, he knows Yoab too well, the way he speaks. And this probably happened before. He's probably, so when he needs something done, he probably sent people in there before. People had nothing to do with it. People, I mean, which, it was a wonderful lady who was even a widow. Uh, I showed all the joys. Here's some ladies. So you pretend to be. Okay, so here we go. 22. Um, and Yoab fell to the ground on his face and did obeisance and brock the sovereign. And Yoab said... Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your eyes, my master, O sovereign, in that the sovereign has done the word of a servant. And he hasn't killed him for deceiving him, right? You know, he's like, oh, right, that's okay. And Yoab rose up and went to Geshur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the sovereign said, let him return to his own house, but do not let him see my face. And Absalom went to his own house and did not see the sovereign's face. All right, what do you guys think of that? What's, uh, why wouldn't he want to, why would dad not want to see kid? Why would he, why Um, would there be commands like this to bring him back but I don't want to see his face. Uh, bring him back into land where he's safe um, where, he, where he doesn't have to worry about like outside people wanting to kill him or something because he's royalty or like hold him hostage to Dawid to like for ransom Dawid or something but uh, probably don't want to see him because he doesn't know how he'll react. Will he be angry? Will he be sad? What will he do? Alright. Um, where are we at? 25? Uh, I think it's 25. Uh, and in all Yisrael, there was no one who was praised as much as Absalom for his good looks. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he cut his hair, when he cut the hair of his head, for it was at every year's end that he cut it because it was heavy on him. When he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels by the sovereign's weight. Um, first of all, uh, what do you think guys make of the sovereign's weight? Why, um, why are maybe the sovereign's weight different than a regular? How much is a shekel? Do we figure out? How much is it weighs? No, I don't know. All right, Mr. Cole will find that for us here in a second. So this guy cut his hair, and they say it weighs 200 shekels. So um, this dude has some hair, like some serious hair. Yeah, it's like the end of every year that he cuts it. Uh, but, I mean, do you, at the end of every year, it's 200 shekels? That's There's a lot of hair to grow. I mean, that's a tremendous amount. like, super heavy or something for, something for some reason. Yeah, I don't know what a shekel weighs. Maybe it's not as much as it sounds like. 11 grams. 11 grams. Uh, so we're talking... So one shekel? What is that, Jade? 11, 11 times 200 would be what? Uh, I should know that. You should do this. 2,200. Yeah. Only 200. And then, so then divide that by ounces? Not not ounces, but, uh, yeah, I mean by ounces because we have... Hold on, the dogs are going crazy here, guys. Sorry, we're trying to figure this one out. Hold on. Yeah, 2,200. 2,200 grams? One kilogram is equal to 87 shekels. 87 shekels. Okay, so he's... 2.2 pounds. Yeah, 2.2 pounds is a kilo. Um, And so how much is that? 
80 shekels is how much? So, but that doesn't make sense because it's... We'll just give me the number. Let's, we'll try to make sense of this. It was 11 grams. Okay, 11 grams. Well, you told me a number before that. And then, but see, then it says one kilogram is equal to 87 shekels. 2.2 2. 2 pounds, so I mean, basically it's double so that, it's like so it's four pounds of hair. Five pounds of hair because four or five pounds of hair. I guess it's possible. Yeah, it's probably closer. To, yeah, five a lot pounds. of hair though, if it, yeah, especially yeah. if he shear himself every year. If he shaves yeah. it all off completely, his neck has to be sore and tired. And it's long. And he cut it because it was heavy on him. Yeah, he cut four pounds of five pounds of hair. That is quite heavy. Okay, all right, twenty-seven. Sorry, guys. And to Absalom were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of lovely appearance. And Absalom dwelt in Jerusalem two years, and he had not seen the sovereign's face. Then Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the sovereign, but he would not come to him. And he sent again the second time, but he would not come. And he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and light it on fire. And Absalom's servants lit the field on fire. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so Joab brings the dude back. Yoab can't get, you, this is like Dawid doesn't want to see him. Yoab, Yoab tries. It's like a he goes spoiled, like, rotten son. And then he goes like Yoab's feel on fire. Like yeah. Yoab's the guy who wanted to bring him back. Yeah, no, Yoab was, Yoab was bringing him back for King Dawid. Um, I believe that. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's kind of disrespectful. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, boy, just lit your field on fire. So uh, Yoab goes, uh, is, 31 should be, and then Yoab went and beat the guy senseless um, and drug him out to his field and had him start replanting the field after he <laughs> burned the thing down. But considering he's the king's kid, that's pro nobody's probably going to touch the king. So um, that's just the way it goes, I suppose. 31. Then Joab rose up and came to the house of Absalom and said to him, Why have your servants lit my field on fire? And it's a question mark, but not an exclamation point. You would think that this guy um, wasn't like, hey, how he, are he you? He might have expected that Absalom, you know, he's very unpredictable. Absalom he's should have absolutely expected a herd of people, and that's what he did. He expected a ticked off uh, Joab at his door. Right? And so he opened his door. Hey, how are you, Yoab? And Yoab goes, What's going on, why, man? Why have you lit my, why have your servants lit my field on fire? I think it was a few decibels higher than that. I think he was probably just really ticked off. 32. And Absalom said to Yoab, Look, I said to you, saying, Come here, so that I send you to the sovereign to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It was good for me while I was there. And now let me see the sovereign's face. And if there's any wickedness in me, then you shall put me to death. Yeah, he was the dude's field on fire. It's pretty wicked. He just, he burned the guy's field. And, and what is the what are the Torah commands for this? Uh, you gotta repay for it. Yeah, you gotta repay this. Do you think he repaid Yoab's stuff or did Yoab just get burned here? I don't know. Literally, he, twice. I mean, yeah, maybe he got repaid. You know, he's a sovereign son. He probably has a lot of money. So Yeah, there so he be, did. There shouldn't be a lot to repay. Here, here's, here's, here's 800 things. shekels or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, 33. Yoab then went to the sovereign and informed him. And he called for Absalom. And he came to the sovereign and bowed himself on the face to the ground before the sovereign. Then the sovereign kissed Absalom. You think there was a conversation of why you burned Absalom's, uh, Yoab's field down? This is Yoab probably went Why'd you kill Yoab, your... Uh, Yoab's like, all right, you think you want to see your son? He went and burned my field down. You either see him or he's going to burn someone else's field down. He's like, all right, send him here. What do you think that conversation was like? Do you think he was talked about uh, his sister? Do you think he talked about his brother? Do you think he talked about like all this stuff? I mean, probably. You think that you think it was open or one of those dirty secrets that you're back? We don't want to really talk about that stuff. It makes everyone uncomfortable. You think you think they, they talked about it or you think it was just one of those, it happened and we never we don't talk about it again? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Maybe Dalvid would want to know what, what he did, but I think Dalvid already knows. He probably just probably doesn't want to hear about it. You know, his children dying, children being defiled. Yeah. He, probably, he probably doesn't want to know. Yeah, it's pretty wild. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. Sorry for the uh, distractions, and that's the way it is here. Much love. We're out. Shalom. Shalom.